Hello, Steven here, and welcome back to our next video on XML processors. Uh, don't forget to take a minute to hit that like and subscribe button down below if you like the video and you haven't had an opportunity to subscribe. And let's go ahead and jump into this, shall we? So the first processor we're going to look at, when we go and look at the list of uh, XML processors, we have a list of five here from Ni5 that are native processors, and they each do a little bit something different or things different in different ways. So the first one we're going to look at is the split, split XML. So let's go ahead and grab that. And let's take a look at its usage. So it's a very simple processor when we look at it. And we can tell here it just splits the XML file into multiple separate flow files, each comprising of a child or descendant of the original root element. So, okay. Now the only property we have inside of it when we go to set it is going to be the split depth which is for indicating the XML nesting depth to start splitting XML fragments. So a depth of one would be the roots ch children, whereas a depth of two means splits, it will split the ch uh, roots children's children and so forth. So not much here, I mean, it writes a couple of attributes. In the attribute section, it looks like it's gonna create four new ones. We have the fragment identifier, index count, and original file name. All right, so in order to use this though, we're gonna need some XML. And to do that, we're gonna use a generate flow file. Go ahead and add that in here. We'll connect the two, look for relationship on success. And then from here, we are going to configure our generate flow file. We'll set the schedule to one minute so we don't get too many. Now we need to populate with some XML. So to do that, we are going to jump on over to, oh, Notepad++ here, and take a look at some XML. So borrowing some XML from the API in our Best Buy project, I went ahead and ran one and had it return some XML for my request of products. So we have a pretty long list here. And we're going to go ahead and grab all this, copy it, jump back on over. And go ahead and configure the processor. So we leave everything alone. We change the custom text. We populate that with our XML. And we have to do a mime, set the MIME type as well. And in here, it would, what well, we want this to be recognized is as text slash XML. That way it knows what type of data this is when it goes into the split XML. Okay, so that's all configured and ready to send a flow file on over. And then we have our split XML. We need to send this someplace real quick so we can create a new relationship. And we'll go ahead and just throw a weight down there, something to put it into. And we'll have the failure and we'll have the split just in case. All right, so let's go ahead and configure our split XML. And here we go, it's already set for a depth of one. So we should be able to run that now and get our first result. Oh yeah, we have to terminate our original. So there we go, we get our first batch there. And then we go ahead and run the split XML. There we go. So we have a hundred and I know for a fact that the XML that we have has a hundred results in it. So we can go ahead and now review these. First, let's go ahead and take a look at the content. And as we can see, we have the XML. So this section up here is our XML prolog is here. And then we have our starting tag. And then we have the end, right? For products. So this is this one product. We can see we have the SKU, the name is there with the uh, XML quote notation, and then the store, in store, online, and regular pricing. So all those came through, they look correct here. And then if we go and take a look at the flow file and look at its attributes, we have our fragment count. So the fragment count, a total of 100 were split out of the flow file. This is the index zero. So the first one in the fragment count, 
And then we have the original flow file name for the segment. So all those made it through, we didn't have any problems. So that was actually pretty simple, right? Now, we can go ahead and clear that real quick. And let's just make sure and see what we get if we change this to two. So this should be children of children. And then we go ahead and run it. Now we're up to 500. And let's see if it worked the way we thought it would. And there you go. So it actually splits out the skew here. So we have our first one, which is a skew. So it took the individual children of the child owned products and went ahead and did the split. So, okay, so now we know it looks like there too. So that's definitely not what we want. We can get rid of all those. So what can we do with this now? Well, there's another processor that we're going to look at next, which is the Evaluate X Path. All right, so Evaluate X Path is very similar to the Evaluate JSON. So if we go ahead and look up here, we can see we have Evaluate JSON, Evaluate X Path. So they're both very similar to each other but they let us work with FXML. Go ahead and take our, take a look at its usage real quick, see if there's anything that we need to know, again, know about. So it evaluates against one or more XPaths against the content of flow file. And it takes those results of the XPaths and assigns them to a flow file attribute. So very similar to what we do when we evaluate JSON, right? And turn it into an attribute as well. You also have the option of sending it to the destination which changes on how you use it and the behavior that you want to do with it. All right, so we also have the return type and then the valet DTT, DTT, D, yeah. It does write one attribute, which is user define. So that's all there is there. Let's go ahead and grab these. We'll take the splits. We will handle terminate the failures. And we need to send these someplace, right? You know what, let's go ahead and make some changes to this so we can have plenty of room. And then grab this last one, we're gonna take the matches. Okay, so this one is, did we set it back to one? No, we did not. So there we go, we're back on the child. We need to configure this, so we wanna send things to the attribute. And now we need to add additional properties as well to identify each of the XPaths we wanna take over. So let's go ahead and put the first one in here, which is going to be this will be our in the store. So is it in store availability? And the path of that one should be products or product. Because we have products and we have product. So product is the child of products. And then from there, we want the in store availability out of that flow file. The next one will be our name of the product. And the path for that one. We have online for our online availability. And then we also have regular price. And then the last one we had was our skew. All right, so just like we do when we do JSON, our, it 
we're attempting to pull out each one of those individual elements and then write them into an attribute so that we have them available at the flow file attribute level. Now let's go ahead and run this one. All right, so we will generate and we'll go ahead and turn this one on. We need to handle failure and unmatched. And that's it for those. Run in one set. And there we go. So we know we had 100 to come out here. We evaluate 100 again. Now we can take a look at them. So we know if we look at the content, no changes were made here. And now we can take a look at the flow file attributes. So under the attributes, we do have new attributes that were added and created. We have in store, true. We have our name of the product. We have the online is true and then the regular price and the SKU. So exactly what we're looking for, same behavior as what we get with a JSON as well when we do it there. So you can handle for it. You can work with flow files when they are in an XML format. Uh, if you want to, just depends really on what you prefer to deal with and how you prefer to work with them. All right, so from here, that's all there really is to these two processors. Uh, I'm gonna get some more videos out on the other two. I want to review those as well and cover them and how they work. So for right now though, we, we just reviewed the uh, split XML processor and the evaluate XML path as well. So I'll catch you in the next video. Don't forget to hit that like button if you like the video and uh, catch you next time.